26th day of September. Welcome, everybody. Hope everybody had a great day. Great weekend. We haven't streamed since Thursday. It's Tuesday. I posted a hundred short videos yesterday. And I think the most I got was around 40 views on one video out of a hundred. Very dismal. And so I'm excluded from my video showing up in the shorts. I got all the little tags and everything else in it. But it's pretty obvious that they got me ostracized. That one had 72 views. I didn't see that one. That's pretty cool. But still, no 100 or anything like that. And that was the last one. No, it wasn't 100 video. Well, I tried to post 100 videos. And I, was the, the and I shot every one of them yesterday, by the way. In lots of 15, 20 or something. And then I would post them, shoot another 15 or 20 short, what they call shorts. It's just a long, long trail of censorship. These are videos removed all at the one time and on a certain date. And these videos, um, or these videos here, will the real Japanese please stand up? Uh, Fukushima should Oxford University students taught by Wade Allison get recertified and get their money back. He's an incredible lunatic professor, of course. Fukushima proof nuclear scientists like Dr. Kevin Kemp are human trash. All these videos got taken down at the same time. Fukushima voodoo, uh, Dr. Brian Hanley, world's most disingenuous nuclear quack. quack, quack. Fukushima, Japan is broken. It's time for Japan to evacuate. Fukushima nuclear public relations firms are the evilest people on earth. And many great classic videos. Fukushima proves pro-nuclear advocates are mentally unstable. One of my favorite, by the way. Why does Woods Hole claim cesium-137 turned into potassium-40 and bananas? Because that's what uh, Ken Abusler did, who had me uh, arrested. I was given gag orders. I wasn't allowed to mention his name or uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute for three and a half years. That's all he wanted was just to silence me. And they did. They took down all these videos were taken down the day before the police came and arrested me. <laughs> no coincidence, I'm sure. Fukushima has destroyed Japan, the Pacific, and the Northern Hemisphere is radioactive. Death throws at a nuclear power, and, it, and I think that still stands true, don't you? Are Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen from the Victoria University actual scientists or wacko nuclear lobbyists? Both of them had me arrested and both of them asked for gag orders, gag orders. The most they can get was three and a half years, and the judge was late to the prosecutor. What's the most we can give him? <laughs> Prosecutors, three and a half years, and the judge like three and a half years. I had most of the restrictions moved within two weeks. I went and seen a provincial court judge and argued my case, and the judge re uh, moved majority to read the incredibly prohibitive restrictions, except for the gag orders, but I wasn't allowed to carry a knife. I mean, I'm on the boat all the time. How am I supposed to go out on the boat and not carry a knife? Blame the Bilderberg Group. I can carry a drill, but I can't carry a knife. What would you rather be attacked with, a knife or a drill? Blame the Bilderberg Group. Don't answer that question. Blame for the Bilderberg Group for the media silence. Fukushima lawyer Gregory Jasko, former chairman of the UN, US. Now, each of these videos I argued and provided documentations for my assertions, a very compelling, not a compelling, but an overwhelming amount of documentation. Again, the governments and elites, uh, Fukushima, the beginning of a new order. 
Uh, and I see Alison McFarland throws Americans under the bus. She actually now is a professor at a university in British Columbia. And one of her studies came out where she criticized small modular reactors. And, and uh, her students and her showed that these creatures, these fabled small modular reactors, were going to produce around 35 times more intermediate level waste, 30 times more high level waste, and five times more fuel rods when scaled up than a conventional nuclear reactor. And these rods were extraordinary because this was going to be mixed oxide fuel. So I apologize for that video for Alison McFarland because she done a moral and ethical thing when she escaped the clutches of the Americans, moved to Canada, and then spoke out eloquently with academic studies that got a lot of traction. Why is CBS and Seth Dorn faking Reactor 4 interior videos? Now remember, all these videos got taken down at the one time. All of these videos were key videos, by the way. And this uh, eventually took down my site. And uh, I had done this video, the last video I had done, the next day they arrested me. And that got taken down that night too. But that was a great video, and I provided a ridiculous amount. And the list goes on and on. You know, why did Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley hide your Fukushima peer review studies? Because they're the three biggest journals, and they got around 22,000 journals amongst them. They actually offered to publish my research, but they wanted it behind a paywall, and I said no to them. Because the idea of going up and doing the research was so the world couldn't say the information didn't exist, right? And that's why we keep this site that we've had for 10 years, the nuclearproctologist.org, because the documentation is all there for you with the GPS of the research expedition. Fukushima dummy can abuse the radiation is like a banana, so shut up. And because I find it really offensive. Now, they took me to court, and it was like 16 times or something. But all he w was meant to break me, bust me, break the bank, and he did. But he just wanted to give me gag orders, and so I couldn't talk about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute or Ken Abusler. Think of that statement. Couldn't talk about an institution for three and a half years, and I couldn't talk about Jay Cullen from Va Victoria Memorial University for three year, three and a half years, and I couldn't talk about the private police department from Canada, known as the Queen's Police in Victoria, there's about 150 of them in the capital of British Columbia, Victoria Police, who issued the warrant against me. And um, I wasn't allowed to mention the police station or the police officers involved. And the police off one of the police officers involved, when I first day in court showed up, he approached me, I told him to get the fuck away from me right now. You gotta remember, I was on sticks, can barely walk in those days. And um, as soon as he told me who he was, I turned on him right on the spot. Because I'm not here to play games. Fukushima whitewash by the non regulatory commission in the US Congress is disturbing. And I provide a, a ridiculous amount of documentation. These were all back to back type videos. Deadly science nuclear scientists a violation of trusts. I'm going to provide you with a whole bunch of information in a moment for the rest of the show, which is a short show tonight because I've done a hundred. I tried to do a hundred yesterday, but Google cut me off and said I reached my limit, which was around 90 or 95 videos. I didn't count them. So try doing. Um, well, I shot 105 videos, but I couldn't upload them, and I was stalled for 24 hours. And that's why this video tonight, on Tuesday, the 26th of September, 2023, is uploaded later than normal because 10 o'clock last night was the cutoff time and I couldn't upload a video or do a preamble for a uh, premiere until after 10, which means you wouldn't get to see it till about 1.30 in the morning. So I'm just going to post this as a normal video. It's only going to probably be about 40 minutes long. What was it? Why is Fukushima Reactor 4 being faked by CBS? And I show you all this information all the time. 
How did super duper scientist Stinkfoot survive childhood? And so here's the pattern they use to take down my videos. So you see these are in a row. I peeled every one of them. Every one of them got rejected. But notice how the pattern is. And these were all leading up um, to the day before I was arrested. Right? And so the, the, the recent videos, you're looking at the very bottom. Uh, I'm missing something there. But anyway, this was generally... So look at the pattern, though, where it was video after video after video after video after video. And you can see the views, you know, 1,500, 3,000, 2,200, 200 thumbs up, 140 typical average thumbs up. And so they just wanted to give me gag orders. This wasn't about actual... I you know, like, you see all these people, I call every one of them the same fucking names. I call Ken Abusler and Jay Cullen, every one of them, scumbag, degenerate, monster, you know, typical, right? But uh, they were put on a pedestal by the American government, the Canadian government, and they were trying to protect their assets. And the only way they can protect their assets is if they have victims. And me and you and the rest of the planet and 8 million species were those victims. Okay, back to the madness. Double the coin. Uh, I'll get on track again. There we go. We're almost here. So there was multiple buildings that lost their inventories. Reactor four. I would hope that's very clear that the entire inventory which is decades of reactor cores in the two fuel pools at the top of each building. So there's eight fuel pools all together for four buildings. And four reactor cores. Unit 4 was changed in the reactor core. And the official story is that building didn't blow up. The official story is they got all the fuel out of the pool. And so why would something so simple to prove is the entire world so silent? Is something that I can't reconcile. Okay, so there's, think of four of these buildings and eight fuel pools are gone, like tens of millions of pounds. And as of July 13, 2023, this year, the official story came out, they changed, moved the goalpost again. Now, if you multiply or divide this kind by 16 times, I screwed that up, I think, too, didn't I? Yeah, that's a one gram coin. You got to do that twice. So I screwed that up. I'll, re I'll, I'll fix it. You got to divide that by eight. Is what they're going to release each year. I think that's how it works. 0 0.06 grams. This was the last poll we done. Will humanity regret not stopping nuclear power plants, perpetual fuel pools, radioactive emissions? Because the fuel pools that are at the top of all reactor buildings have no containment and they're still splitting the same atoms. Each of the reactor cores, there could be five per, per fuel pool, that each of those reactor cores were powering a million homes, those atoms are still being produced. So when you say they don't have any solution for waste, this is what they're talking about, but they, won't, they refuse to articulate it. You'll never find it out there anywhere. But I was able to extrapolate it, what the issue actually was, and we've been articulating it for a very long time. And this, this is why almost all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, because the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation. If you un actually understood the, the significance of how much radiation a day we're talking about, think of 400 nuclear power plants worldwide doing that every day, covering the planet with a plume, a new one, each day that never goes away. Y you're not wrong. 
These models are based on venting, not based on nuclear meltdowns from Fukushima, by the way. Okay, so on that topic of fuel pools hemorrhaging radiation, nuclear power plants produce snow in Pennsylvania. I've never seen this particular phenomenon observed before, said one person. It doesn't mean it didn't happen before. It happens all the time. You just don't see it typically. A 30-mile long cloud went over Pittsburgh and over an inch of fluffy snowfall. And that's kind of the radar signature of the fallout. So, because they're boiling, you know, a million gallons a minute is why you're seeing that phenomenon. But remember, the fuel pools are vented at the same time, uh, 24 hours a day. Each fuel pool is losing around 120,000 liters. So that 30 kilometer radius, you know, the wind's gonna blow in all kinds of different directions. Once the wind slows down a little bit, that stuff will disperse. And most of the, almost all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. Uh, so they're talking about tritium. And the problem with tritium was we have super amount of documentation about this particular facet of radiation identification was that cesium levels um, in Tokyo were so high, the alpha particles too, which uh, cesium is a gamma. Cesium levels are so high, it prevented identification of other isotopes. And what that means, what you got to put that in perspective, is that you, you, you won't find tritium in Japan because the biggest signature is going to be the curium isotopes, which needs lead shielding 20 times thicker, 20 times thicker than you do for the plutonium equivalent. And, and curium decays, all curium fission decays, to, which is all of it, decays 100% man made, like the plutonium, but it's 20 times more energetic. And so the plutonium, uranium, the americium fission products, the neptunium, the strontium, the sulfur peroxide, hydrogen buckyballs, the radioactive emissions, all of them will drown out the single of tritium. It's just important you understand that because the researchers certainly do. Researcher too frightened to get closer than 100 kilometers from meltdown after seeing radiation levels. School playground. School playground staircase at 70 times maximum allowed, far from the evacuation zone, equal to 69,000 microsieverts a year. But you, why would you measure it in microsieverts? I don't understand it because there's 30 million one ton bags, they're not measured in microsieverts, they're measured in, in physical atoms. When you see microsievers or millisievers, that's 100% misrepresentation of every facet of the story. So the bags are about 100,000, the minimum I think was 100,000 beckles a kilogram. And once you pe stop paying attention, they picked up 30 million. Once you stop, the uh, alleg uh, allegedly do, and they being the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language, the voiceless, well, not around here, they're not. We, we make sure we include them every show, I'm pretty sure. Before Fukushima, 100 beckles a kilogram of cesium is nuclear waste, and after, it's safe to eat. But to suggest that only cesium is in these bags, for instance, that the only reason you got millions, you're banning the town, not because of cesium, but because of a thousand different fission products. If you got one, it's it's... Safe to say there's hundreds of more in that sample, but they're drowned out by the strongest single. They, they didn't abandon these communities for cesium, it's plutonium and curium and uranium. Japanese lawmaker, 180,000 students may have eaten, not may, and that's not a may have, folks. That's... Um, 
That's the reality. Remember, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. And so, again, they're not talking in microsievers, right? They're talking in becquels per kilogram. <coughs> um, so microsievers, millisievers, generally when you're around fuel particulates that have come down close by, the reactors. It's true, you'll still find that number, but you're supposed to refer to it in, in a physical atoms that are floating around or landed, see? And in this case, you got 100 uh, 1,300 becquels a kilogram, but they're actually only acknowledging cesium. Almost all the studies, so very few, are talking about cesium 137. So every organism in Fukushima Prefecture is contaminated with radiation, and you know 1.4 million becquels, not millisieverts or microsieverts, but physical atoms. In the excrements from worms, 60 kilometers from the meltdowns that that are might never stop melting down. And and this is uh, the air here is going to be incredibly radioactive. And these numbers, by the way, when you get it, you know you get an atom, a Beckwell pulsing energy, an at which is an atom pulsing energy. That's the Beckwell, and that pulse every second is almost at the speed of light. And um, it's a perpetual machine, by the way. That's uh, what nuclear is. It's emissions. They're pulsing energy forever. But the fuel pools are, the, are splitting atoms forever. They're perpetual misery machines, disease factories. Because you can't contain it. Japan's crews are facing a 100-year battle at Fukushima. Well, it was a lot worse than that. I mean, you picked up 30 million one-ton bags of radiation that you're now cutting open and growing food at it, in it, two miles away from ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. So if, so if the nuclear industry hasn't lost a, pl lost a plot, what have they? This is a genocide, omnicide machine. They're attacking every species, and then by proxy, you go too. They're attacking the species, the flora, the flora, the bacteria, the fungus. They're, they're annihilating the oceans and the water. They're attacking, and, and, and because 70% of the planet is water, you can make a pretty good case that they're attacking the water, which is the life of all species. You can't have any species, you know, functional, visible species without water, right? Radioactivity of 14,600 becquels a kilogram in rice paddies, far from the nuclear meltdowns. And then they claim they're checking 50 million bags of the year and they don't find any. But in order to, to get the bags to be checked, they've got to drive past millions of one-ton bags because that's where they're growing it. I, I don't understand why that's such a hard concept. I thought when I put this stuff together that there's there's the answer for education. Everybody's like, except for the regulars that are here, but the rest of the planet is like, huh, Fukushima, tritium, I think, Dana? Yeah. Usually when you say it to me, I'm like, get away from me. Japan must be the only place in the world where several million becquels, radioactive isotopes, is incomparable, highly radioactive blue algaes and school roots. So all, all of that should be abandoned. Yeah. You don't send the children, you wouldn't send your children to North America to school in that place, or Russia, or China, or anywhere else. And the only reason you're getting away with it is because everybody's silent. And so they, they don't have anybody to beat up. There, there's thousands of public relations firms waiting to pounce on you. There's tens of thousands of cultists, nuclear death cult uh, members willing to attack you for free. Trust me, I know. Over 35% of young people tested have thyroid cyst or nulls. 35% says thyroid cancer is expected in children, Prime Minister's former advisor from Fukushima nearby prefectures. 
And these are tumors of around two centimeters is what they're talking about. The thyroid gland, by the way, is only three centimeters by five centimeters. So a two centimeter tumor on something that's three by five centimeters is catastrophic. Now, the thyroid is producing the hormones for your entire your body, so it's ridiculously catastrophic. And in order to get the thyroid tumor, that means it's saturated with all kinds of gamma. And other isotopes, other emitters will also end up in your thyroid. It's not just gamma. And there's lots of gammas to do it. And certainly when you're talking about producing iodine at ratios of 31 to every iodine 131, the 129 rather, with a 50 million year half-life, you're, you're producing... The ratios in Canada, uh, 7,000 miles away in Ottawa, were 220 million atoms per liter. So all the thyroid glands were saturated. And yeah, it's a low emitter, but it's an emitter at the speed of light. It does it every second. It's a fission product. It's wrecking chromosomes and DNAs and cells and, and causing lesions to the organs. And then the thyroid is producing radioactive hormones, which is saturating the pituitary gland, which also stores a lot of very, very important hormones, which are now replaced with anthropogenic man-made. And this is true for all the species, so it's very bad for me and you, there's 1,800 diseases, but imagine how bad it is for the insects and the birds and the mammals and the animals and everything else, because you're supposed to be the steward, and without you being the steward, if they go, you go. 5.5 million beckles a kilogram, again, you know, these are the right way you would measure. You wouldn't use millisieverts or microsieverts. You're only going to use that if you're trying to cover it up and confuse people. And it's only meant as completely dishonest, too. <coughs> because you can, you, can, you can convert that to millisieverts or microsieverts, but you're not, you're not bringing... Uh, the prominence that it deserves by doing that. You, right, you, the prominence is acknowledging its physical atoms. Each atom gets in your body's pulsing energy at the speed of light every second for the rest of your life. Your body attacks it every second. It's like a big fire and you got a little garden hose and you spend the rest of your life trying to put that fire up, but the fire won't go out. And, and if you don't stop, if you keep, as long as you keep the water on it, your house don't burn down. But the minute you stop for three seconds, your house is going to burn down. And so you stay there for your whole life with this fire hose. That's what your body's doing with white blood cells for each of these atoms. And you put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. But the energy that it's producing is at the speed of light. Because it's, un it's undeniable how much energy we're talking about. That's why you're able to use that technique to boil water for millions of homes. And the fuel, once you come into the reactor after 18 months with no containment now in a fuel pool, is still splitting the atoms. So that's going to be piped up tall, skinny pipes on site. Japan radiation expert after 311. Don't leave, just leave Tokyo, leave the country. And not leave the country. You shouldn't leave the country. Now there are some, you know, Al Jazeera saying they got 60 million one-ton bags. And by the way, these bags are only meant to last you for a year or two. That was the original thing about this. They're not waterproof. With rain and, and tides, uh, cyclo or typhoons and everything, that rain goes right through these bags and washes radiation back into the environment, ultimately into the water table or into the food chain or into the pollen chain. Minimasoma official, the children are the sacrifices, and the businesses are forced the mayor to keep the children here, which is the industry itself they're talking about, because that's the only people stayed back in the nuclear wasteland, is Minimasoma. So 10 million back was a kilogram of cesium to take the Minimasoma soil sample. Well, far, far away from Minimasoma, it's endless radiation. There's 105,000 sites like that. And in Tokyo, 240 miles away, 4,000 beckles a kilogram of cesium never disappears. 
This this is in the fog. This is the fog. The morning dew. The fog. You don't always get fog because the conditions aren't right. But that that doesn't mean that's not in the air. It's not in microsievers and millisieverts. Is it? It's Beckwell is an appropriate term. And none of these bags are full of tritium. They're all full of fission products. 70% of children in Kanto, a region includes Tokyo, have radioactive seasoning in the urine. And so why do we have every academic worldwide, every university, um, all the media claiming all of a sudden, you know, the evidence, because they originally reported on it for the first couple of years, here's the evidence. There's a concerted effort to... I don't even know how, it's so crazy to say that only 2.2 grams got out of buildings when you got millions of one-ton bags, for goodness sakes. It's so such a crazy story that they're doing since July the 13th of this year. It's, it's a new story. And so they can't just tell the, the, the and, and the story is about, came out of South Korea originally, which the new administration as, is promoting nuclear and nuclear power plants construction worldwide. They're trying to. And so they can't go against it and promote it at the same time, right? But there's something more sinister obviously going on. So uh, South Korea, Taiwan, China are working in tandem with Japan to manipulate the Asian population, which is a huge population on the planet, right? And their version of the story is radically different from the official story we've been listening to for 12 years. So I, I had a big show already tonight for everybody, and uh, I just, I never got to it. I just uh, couldn't get to it. Done. We've done I've done 105 videos yesterday, but Google stopped me at around 90 or 95 at uploading, so that's, I reached my limit. Um, and then I couldn't upload anything for 24 hours, and that's why this video is going to show up. Uh, it's going to be a short video compared to the normal news cycle, which takes roughly two hours to talk about. So tomorrow, I have, I've got an amazing video it keeps getting bigger and bigger for the moral I'm going to try to accomplish is two hours, two hours, ten minutes or something. But because um, you can't rush this subject, seventy percent of the children in a region by Tokyo have radioactive cesium. Then they got uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium. You can't just have cesium. Only 10% of the school lunches are tested, and the officials didn't even know the testing equipment worked. And what they were doing with the farmers <coughs> were they were, after this accident, they were telling farmers and giving them these inferior Geiger counters. Safe cash showed up and gave them even worse handmade Geiger <laughs> counters, crowdfunded millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, and, and Got the, the volunteers then to buy these little $15 packages and build their own Geiger counters and go out and use that to quantify the radiation of the entire country. What an insidious betrayal. Why did an American organization show up and take over the country like that? What an incredible betrayal. And so the farmers were given these inferior Geiger counters, and they were told to measure the food, the, radi the food they're growing, and if it's over 500 becquels a kilogram, not in millisieverts or microsieverts, but 500 becquels a kilogram, they couldn't ship it to market. Not universities, not academics, not institutions or government agencies, but the farmers were put in charge, testing, and so they don't have a very big incentive to make a mistake. And the Geiger counters are inferior. Not gonna, they're not going to measure at best some gamma. They're not going to measure alphas, neutrons, or betas, or the x-rays that you know are going to be there. Because if you got two, you've got to have x-rays, right? Because the emissions don't mingle with each other. 
They're pulsing at the speed of light in every direction. And if they hit a, a similar or another isotope, or even a similar one, the, the emissions at the speed of light don't pulse through each other. They hit each other and they change directions. The braking effects. The what? The ger it was discovered by a German physicist. is known as the Bramson Long effect. From Germany. Rice planted 10 miles from the Diachi. It can't stay in town overnight, but it's intended for sale. Well, I mean, you know, you're talking 70, 80, 100 kilometers away. It's, it's an endless nightmare. Millions and millions of one-ton bags of radiation. And it's really like 105,000 big storage sites, way beyond, each of them way beyond that, right? And you're talking 30 to 60 million one-ton bags. They admit to 30 million in 2015. And um, Professor, it's really a dead zone in areas of Fukushima. Huge impacts, no butterflies, birds. Uh, many dramatically fewer speeches. Why does it matter to the U.S.? Because uh, it's coming. It's coming. And, and it came right away. It came in... in Perpetual waves is still going. The entire planet. The entire planet was quickly covered in Fukushima plumes, and all the institutions, government models, uh, support that, that same findings. That model is based on um, 27 days. The bottom depiction. Interesting to use green. UC Berkeley expert told the public there is no, and I got a whole folder on UC Berkeley professors. Holy smoke Rui. They attacked every facet of this from the beginning. Though, I'm not sure if it was a Krypton 133 or the Zirconium, not Zirconium, but uh, Xenon, uh, yeah, Xenon 133. At a million becquels a square meter, the, the French models was 10 million, up to 10 million becquels a square meter of cesium-137 follow. Nuclear industry didn't try to bury the truth, they, they buried it. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable, it's, it's, it's absolute contempt for you. And they got control of the governments, the medias now, and the universities for quite a few decades. Um, and they used the Secrecy Act, the original Manhattan Projects, for instance, in the Northern Hemisphere, to wield that kind of control. And they never let it go. And they, they, they have tens of thousands of spies used to spy on the scientists at the Manhattan Project. Do you think they gave up their jobs after Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Anybody really think that? Anybody believe that? Excuse me. Mom, Dana's slurping on the microphone. After cleanup, high school, 7.9 microsieverts an hour. So what what that means, though, is this incredible contempt because you're, you're getting children to go back you're sending children in, you know, they got to go past millions of one-ton bags to get to school every day. So rather than evacuate them, I'll show you how absurd it actually was in Koryama City. I mean, there's many, many of these Koryama City moments. <laughs> got to think for a second. Bear with me, because it's uh, that particular story is. Uh, oh, I did. I'm, I got a short version of it. Uh, this is. Uh, this tells you basically the madness of the story. Now, every house in Koryama City is entitled to evacuation or clean up, uh, decontamination, not evacuation. Every, they all should be evacuated. 
So elementary school in Japan is using water bottles stacked up inside and outside the classroom, outdoors and indoors, to block the radiation they figure from, because the academics have lied to them, and they believe the radiation is outside but not inside. And the radiation we're talking about, there's no way, because Koryama City, United Nations went there, and they were showing 162,000 becquerels of cesium-137 because he refused to acknowledge the other isotopes actually exist per square meter in, in the entire city. All 90,000 houses of the 341,000 population are entitled to decontamination, but they ran out of the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society and immigrants who don't speak the language. Elementary school, elementary school, elementary school, children, like real small children. In a nuclear wasteland, 34 kilometers from ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns, surrounded by millions of one-ton bags of radiation, is using water bottles, water bottles, to shield the radiation coming from the courtyard and other areas around the school buildings. The bottles are filled with water, placed inside boxes, and they're stacked around the classrooms. Going to school to reduce the radiation levels inside the school by one third. Because they're measuring microsievers and millisievers when they should be measuring this one here, which is Beckles per kilogram. It's 34 miles away from the nuclear meltdown. So that, that line here is the disposition of cesium. You're going to have 100 times more strontium-90 after the first 1,000 days. That's going to persist for tens of thousands of days, that ratio. The second line over there, that direction, is or from the name. you got the name of the community, the population, and this is the decays per square meter per second, atomic decays, of just CC-137. But you can't have just CC-137. And so they've been running this game for a very long time. So all of these communities, and there's just so many of them, I haven't got them all right here, but all the way from A to Z, just oodles and oodles of these communities, United Nations, Unsclear, went in and found these numbers of just gamma, which officially now doesn't exist. None of this is real anymore, as of January the or July the 13th of this year. High amounts of radioactive material have been found around the town. And school lunches are tested. The parents are concerned they're unable to find out where the items are produced. And because it's outside the evacuation zone, there's barely conducted any decontamination activities, despite the fact that every building there is entitled to be decommissioned. And there's every town surrounding it is radioactive. And so why, why would United Nations, unclear, not evacuate the children from the nuclear wasteland because they're com they're not who they claim they are, that's for sure. And not evacuating the children, how does that actually work? How can you be, if you, had, if you have a, like how can you not evacuate the children in a nuclear wasteland, surrounded by nuclear wasteland? How can the teachers quantify putting boxes of bottles, telling all the students, bring all the empty bottles, we're going to fill them up with water to protect you. And that doesn't raise concern worldwide. Nobody's concerned. That is so unconcerned, the media put it up there and only had one comment in 2020 when I grabbed that headline from 2013. Tea leaves at 2,700 becquerels a kilogram picked by elementary school children in a nuclear wasteland. Hard to and they gave 90,000 children and pregnant women dosimeters that they can't even read. It has to be sent to the universities to get the readings later. The kids get a new one every so often, and they send these off to universities. University students, yeah, that kid is cooked. I can't wait to be a nuclear scientist. Hard to imagine something more frightening than five-year-olds marching off to irradiated school playgrounds. Well, the only thing more frightening is 
the teacher's not evacuating them, the university's not rescuing them, the media, the silence is the equivalent to cutting their throats for 50 years with diseases and illnesses, not on new deficiencies and injuries. It's revolting. They, they've, they have, um, Fukushima has outed the nuclear industry as a soulless, spineless, gross, despicable industry th that makes all other crimes against children look innocent. Geiger counters at a nursery school off the soil, off the scale. Topsoil was already replaced. Look, you, you, like if you're in a nuclear wasteland and you replace the topsoil with the intentions of bringing children back to the nuclear wasteland, you should be put in jail for the rest of your life. Anybody that participated and should lose their children, that's child abuse. Medical experts see what a conscience, pains a conscience. Japan's safety standards and radiation levels for children are unconscionable. Fukushima consequences unlimited time, space, and social dimensions, and it doesn't have a limit. I mean, they should have picked up 30 trillion one-ton bags in just Japan and 100 trillion in Canada and 100 trillion in America. All the topsoil in the entire continent of Japan or North America and Japan's country, all the islands, all the topsoil, all the trees should have been cut down. All the buildings should have been razed to the ground and brought to a nuclear dump. That's how stupid nuclear actually is, see? Tokyo samples has high radiation levels, higher than Chernobyl, south on the other side of Tokyo, 240 kilometers away. University radiation tests of 56 microsieverts an hour. 2011, July, they did originally go out and do some great work. And then anybody that was speaking out got demoted, and anybody that was covering it up got promoted. The industry controls now has destroyed everybody's future, including their own and their loved ones. And telling the truth is instant end to the nuclear industry. They can't tell the truth. And so now the like, it can only get bigger. It can't, it, they can't mitigate it some way because they're too much invested. They're, all their careers are down the drain immediately if the truth comes out. The industry is flat the minute the truth comes out. And we are dead if they don't. All the species now are on the extinction list. We, we're facing, un, this is unequivocally, unassailably with my research expeditions for years and years now since Fukushima, this is an extinction event. And, there, and this is why the detritium 2.2 gram story came up because they know they killed the planet and they don't want to take that blame. So they're getting ahead of it. It's the same reason for for the transvestite and uh, the transhumanism for children where they're trying to, children can pick whether they're a dog or a boy or a girl or a rock and that's who they identify as because of the mutations that eventually are going to show up are going to be like that. They're setting the bases, they know what's coming. And they're so disconnected, they're trying to ram this down your throats, right? Nuclear industry propaganda but low level radiation is not rubbish, it's criminal. It's criminal. It's not propaganda, it's ball faced lies, dangerous lies that stop you from being able to protect yourself, that make you complacent when you you have no right to be complacent, which is a horrifying reality. Radiological experts find forty five microsievers and but see, you shouldn't. Whenever in schools you hear microsievers, typically instead of Beckwells, which is physical atoms, because you're talking far away from the reactors. You talk, see, it's airborne. So much airborne. This is the numbers you're getting from the air. It's a nuclear wasteland. It should be evacuated. Japan should be evacuated. And you know that. That's you know why nuclear power plants have almost a hundred sirens within 10 miles of them because you have no time to react. 
everything is precious. And that was done because of Three Mile Island, because of the way they covered it up. Government answer to protecting children in Fukushima was wear long sleeve shirts at school. That's not an answer. You move meta there. You can't you can't stay there. It's a nuclear wasteland for goodness sakes. But because it takes quite a while for it to manifest and be diagnosed. Human embryos, the bioaccumulating iodine, cesium, strontium. No, they're bio yeah, they're that, but the worst thing is they're bioaccumulating is the curium is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods, not cesium, not iodine, and they are prolific. They're very bad. Japan gave the government speedy radiation forecast to US militaries. But now when you look at the endless, endless perpetual unbelievable massive amount of contaminants found throughout Japan, let alone Fukushima Prefecture. Now you can quantify these types of assertions, see? Japan government withheld the forecast to prevent the panic, but obviously they should have panicked. So anybody who went through these Areas before they picked up the bag. What do you think happened to them long term and their loved ones? Radiation forecast in Japan kept secret. But it's not a secret anymore because they picked up millions and millions of one ton bags of radiation and millions and millions of one ton bags of radiation. The tanks are there to manipulate you so you don't think of the millions of one ton bags of radiation. They want you to believe. All the melter reactors, everything was cut and everything is in the tanks. If you put this high level stuff in the tank that produced 30 million one ton bags, if you took that same stuff from the melter reactors, you can't build another tank on site. And you see the small tanks over there, like the bluish hue? The majority of the tanks they're counting are very small tanks. So a great big house of cards, and when the whole shit comes down, you're at the bottom of that pile. Forecast map of radioactive cloud threats to U.S. West Coast. <sighs> Threat to U.S. West Coast. And we'll end it on that. I'll show you a model of that. And... I just wish there was more people out there having this conversation because it's easy to censor one person like me. But if, if, if thousands of people are doing it, then we're going to have a conversation about reality. And they refuse to include that in the reality. And each of these buildings you're looking at, like Reactor 4 and the fuel pools, remember Chernobyl never had no fuel pools. They are like four or five reactor cores stuffed in these fuel pools because you don't have a repository anywhere to put it. And so, like, I've been under siege for a long time, under siege for a very long time. They've done everything to get rid of me. I've done everything to inform you. I'm not allowed to live stream on YouTube or Rumble anymore. Not because YouTube and Rumble officially banned me, but because they have unofficially banned me from live streaming. Uh, let, me sh let, me exp let me show it to you. So if I go to create a video, go live, it brings me right to my page. Look at this. And so there, I can't set up a stream, see? I can't set up a stream. This is what I end up on. So normally you get a page and you fill it all out and then I, I do all the work, I post it, there's the preamble and this would be the preamble, right? But there is no preamble. That's my inside page that, that would show up after you see it on your end, I'll get this on my end. 
But I got it on my end, you got nothing on your end, which means I can't set up a live stream. The pages, right, because normally, watch, I'll show it one more time. So if I want to upload, if I want to upload, um, go to my site. So if I want to upload, I'm sorry. If I want to upload a video, I go, which is what I'm doing tonight, I'll click this one, and it'll say upload a video. Select a file, upload your video. But if I want to do a, an actual go live video, I don't have the ability. And what Rumble does, Rumble cuts me off after 18 minutes, and it's, it's really patchy the whole time, so it's not watchable. Not only that, when I post at Rumble, Rumble usually doesn't let it show up for seven or eight days, if at all. Some of my videos I had to post three times, and then four days later they let it show up and it get like six views. Rumble's supposed to be where you go for no censorship. But Rumble's where you're going to go to get censored, right? And so, remember, in Japan, there was 865,000 cancers in the first year. And now, since Fukushima, you're seeing cancer skyrocket, people dropping dead all over the place from heart attacks. The official story is now, that no longer is the official story. The official story now is 2.2 grams of tritium. Is all that got out, nothing else got out. And so I didn't want to put out a half a video tonight because I saw I still don't have a vehicle back. The vehicle's still in the shop. They still haven't even touched it. I just have so much bad luck and I can't, I don't have any other option. I can't pick it up and bring it to another garage and get them to fix it. I have maybe enough money to fix it if, I'm, if they don't rob me. What's the odds a garage is not going to rob me? So if you got two of these coins and one eighth of one of the coins is what they're going to release from the thousand tanks a year into the ocean of just tritium, but you can't find the tritium signal because it's going to be drowned out by all the other isotopes from the actual meltdowns. That officially never happened as of July the 13th, 2023. That is no longer true. Congratulations, welcome to the craziness, the madness that is the nuclear industry. Fight for your future, fight for your species, fight for your loved ones. I apologize to anybody who was irritated by me posting 100 videos yesterday, trying to. I got around 90 something that Google let me post. But so now people got all these little less than one minute videos they can share if anybody ever finds my site. But my videos are not going into the short system where you might pick up a 1,000 or 4,000 views, right? You have to come to my site and click on it or you don't get to see it. And then they, they take down my videos whenever they don't like me. They get me arrested and give me gag orders to silence me when I try to explain the, the actual crimes against humanity to be committing. I've been prosecuted, been vilified, demonized. If you look me up on YouTube or the internet, you're going to find all the lies about me and a little of the truth, if at all. I just want to remind myself I'm not the bad guy, despite what everybody says about me. I'm just providing you the documentation to try to help you find your way forward. Just because 8 million species are dependent upon us, there's no pressure.